Man, Dr. B, we welcome back. We are live, family. Shout out to everybody in the chat room. Peace to the family worldwide, the galactic family. Hey, Dr. B, you know how you always tell me people all over the world tune in? I wonder if if beings from other galaxies be tuning in. Like, are we interested enough where they watch Black Magic on in Saturn or some shit? Like, you know, do they watch Black Magic on Saturn? What you think, man? They watch it everywhere, man. It's it's it's, it's universal wide. Okay. Yeah, you you know it's everywhere. It's broadcasted. All right. Everything and everybody is pick, picking up the frequencies. It just depends on you know whether they're tuned into the message. All right, good man. I, I, I'm hoping I'm interested enough where the Syrian beings want to watch my show. They're watching. <laughs> all right. Shout out to the Syrian beings. You know. Shout out to all of y'all out there. And I'm serious too. I'm not y'all think I'm joking. I'm serious. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm serious too. I'm Dr. B serious. <laughs> Dr. B serious, indeed. Man, um, well, welcome back to the show, my brother. This is the first time you are here since the blueprint for God Power, the most, the most successful conscious event that we have ever seen. It was huge, it was phenomenal. A lot of people said you made them cry, brother. What's up with you making people cry? Man, people need to cry and let go of some of that energy, man. We holding on to a lot of energy that 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 needs to go, man. Yeah, we got to we got to release. We've been so so stiff and so strong and so hard. Uh, you know, we gotta we gotta loosen up and that feeling yeah. trumps thinking, man. Yeah. Emotion. Yeah, the inner emotion, man, has got to be out. So a lot of folks are having emotional outbreaks and. Breaking off some of the tissue that's been causing their issues. And we're about to get to some commercials real quick. You know, me and Dr. B just started vibing right away. You know, they say emotion, Dr. B. You know, we always talk about experience. They say emotion is the chemical experience in the body. So your body's having an experience, but it's the chemical experience. And that's what emotion is. That's some deep stuff, man. That's right. It's an like you have a, a, a when you're making something like for the skin or a cream. It's an emotion, yeah. an emotion. It's 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 energy in motion mm -hmm. that's put together in a certain place. So yeah, and it's mm. those chemicals and that release and you know we're we're chemical factories, man. Yeah, we are. Huh? Oh man, man. Let's let's get to these commercials, family, because we about to get started. It's about to go down big time tonight. And uh, we all going to do a lot of learning and remembering about who we are and what our mission is. So we're going to get to a few commercials. Get comfortable. Um, everybody in the chat, make sure you hit the like button. Very important. Very important. Share the link if you can to friends and family. And we'll be right back after this brief commercial, family. Hey there. Had a bad dream? I have dreams too. Some parts are scary and some parts are fun. Always remind yourself. It's only a dream and everything will be okay. I had a dream about being in a forest too. Check it out. My pet Petey was with me. Order your copy of Kayla Petey and the Forest on Amazon today. It's the numeral facial session with King Simon. Text your full name and date of birth to 347-496-1022. That's 347-496-1022. And get my books on Amazon now. Inner Alignment Workshop through your eyes and your numero with Dr. Shakira Moore and King Simon on February 11, 2023. Dr. Shakira and King Simon. Get your tickets now at Linktree forward slash King Simon the numero Veda. All right, all right. Let's uh, see what's going on in the chat room. What's going on with y'all in the chat room? All right. Shout out to everybody. Let me see if I see any Neo Matrix, anybody else I recognize in the chat. We got a lot of new names I don't recognize. Karain, shout out to Karain, Karain Water. All right. A lot of, yeah, a lot of new names I don't recognize. Cosmic Royalty, shout out to Cosmic Royalty. Uh, Queen Nefertiti. I believe you was at the workshop, Queen Nefertiti. Shout out to Queen Nefertiti. I think you won a ticket, matter of fact. And uh, shout out to everybody else that's in the chat, you know. Uh, with that being said, like I said, Dr. B, man, welcome back. We always have real deep s stimulating. Uh, I, I Like I said, you, you made the people cry at the workshop. Now, you, you speak, you, you talk, your talking engagements aren't just mentally stimulated, stimulating. They're emotionally stimulating as well. 
So you uh, do a great job of touching the core of our beings. And I think that's uh, definitely a special gift that you that you have, my brother, being able to not only touch people intellectually, but to touch people uh, um, at their core as well. So I, def I know today is going to be no different and you're going to do a great job. Um, the name of the show, my brother, is Holographic Light Matrix. Me and you have a lot of great conversations on the phone. Um, you know, I get an opportunity to ask you all types of questions and learn about all types of stuff. Actually, any weird question I want to ask. And we was having a question one day about the role of the eyes and the role of different parts of our body and how much we've been misled or 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 or, or lied to or or just fed misinformation about what these organs or, or on our body does and the, the role of them. So I want to start out with this clip real quick. I think this is I think this is pretty interesting. I'm gonna have to for the family to hear it. Let me see. Let me do something real quick. Give me one second, y'all. Dr. B, you can still hear me, right? Yes, sir. All right. Let me move my mic closer. <laughs> The same situation applies to all our other senses. Sound, touch, taste, and smell are all perceived in the brain as electrical signals. Therefore, our brains throughout our lives do not confront the original of the matter existing outside us, but rather an electrical copy of it formed inside our brain. It is at this point that we are misled by assuming these copies are instances of real matter outside us. And I'm gonna end it there, because y'all get the point. Let me stop sharing this. I'm gonna end it there. Let me put, connect this mic back up here. Hold up y'all, give me a second. That was real real important that we start that way and i was willing to start that even if you two trips because it's that important but that's why i said i might have to delete it but if you're alive you lucky that you got to see it uh karen said um you hear me by the way right dr b you hear me yes 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 karen said to pin the video link at the top so while dr b is talking i'll pin the link of the video at the top of the chat so y'all could watch it at your own leisure all right but dr b listen man we're so misled about how this thing worked down here in this dimension in this realm i think i'm seeing this this dude just told me that i'm seeing this in a dark spot in the back of my brain and that um, my brain is converting signals and all this other stuff I, dr b you got some explaining to do <laughs> you got to tell me what what the hell is going on? I'm not seeing this. I'm Dr. B. Tell me, and this all goes in to the whole holographic light matrix. You know, we live in this light realm, and we come from this triple darkness and all of this stuff. Oh, man, it, it, I, I get excited when when I hear about because I feel like I'm making the next breakthrough. I feel like I'm getting going to the next level, family, and I feel like we're all doing that. As Dr. Dr. B. Talk to me. I see you putting your head down. You. <laughs> Woo! Talk to me, man. Come on, man. Come on. I love this stuff. Almost let me, let everything. Me imaginary water. I'm sorry. Let me drink my imaginary water, family. Go ahead, Dr. B. Go ahead. No, it's not imaginary. It's real. All right. Go ahead, brother. Almost everything that we think we know. Yes. Is based on information that was given to us by people who had limited knowledge. They even may have had limited imaginations because if you go back 200 years, even 100 years ago, a cell phone would be, I mean, this would be, you know, what the heck is that? You know, when we saw the first cell phones, uh, the, the, the communicators on Star Trek, that was amazing, but now we have it. So we were taught based on the limits of knowledge from times ago. Mm -hmm. As we move 
through the galaxy, as we move through the omniverse, mm -hmm. we're picking up more information from the space that we move through. Mm -hmm. So our knowledge is expanding. We are basically living in a projection. Mm. Mm -hmm. It is a holographic universe. Mm -hmm. Even though you feel like you can feel your hands and you can touch the table, everything is 99.9% .9 space. Mm. Jesus. It is your programming that gives you the knowledge that you think you have about the world. It's the repetition over and over, you hearing things, seeing things, feeling things, and making agreements. So we have these contracts that are based on what was given to us. So some of what we're receiving now, we couldn't have it before. Because we're still we're still in kindergarten when it comes to the knowledge of the real world. And I'm not talking about the earth. See, your world is not the earth. When we say the world is going to, we're at the beginning of a new world or where this is the end of a world. That's your world. Each person has their own world based on the language, based on the culture, based on how they eat, how they live, where they sit, where they where they are on the planet. I mean, think about this for a second. Why do people have a certain accent that live in a certain area? So you could tell Brother Rich has a New York accent, a New York rhythm. Where does that come from? Why? Because he's from where he's from. Does he talk like that? People in the South have what you call a southern accent. Where does it come from? And I'm going to give you a little piece of history as we get into this. The south of America, of North America, the southern states had lots of mosquitoes at one time. And most of the people got sick from the mosquitoes. So the people who were sick from the mosquitoes, their brain was affected, the ones who didn't die. So the frontal lobe and the communication parts of their brain was slightly delayed. So the people begin to talk slower. And the children are born, they talk the same way. Because they're modeling. So all this information that we receive that gives us our culture and our way is, a, is all modeling. Some of the things about the universe, the innerverse, we're just now finding out. Your agreements have to change. Your contracts with things have to change. Once you are able to be open and not so closed, then you begin to tap into this place where everything is totally different than what you have been told. You have been modeling. You've been modeling people with, their, with the way they talk, the way they act. So what you're seeing is more like is what you're agreeing that you see. See, these are references. Most of the things that you know about are references. There's a big difference between a reference and a referent. A referent is an actual experience. When you've had an actual experience, you were there. You could touch, feel, and see it. That is something that you can say, yeah, I was there. But most of what you know, you weren't there. You just heard about. You heard that the sun was this hot burning thing with fire. Well, fire needs oxygen. There's no oxygen in space, so the sun couldn't be burning. Even though it's hot, it's not the type of heat that you know about, that you realize it's not like a fire, you know, the campfire or your stove. These are agreements. The world that you see 
right? Is on the macro level is totally different on the micro level. It's a totally different set of rules in the quantum world. When you look at things, you see them because an energy field comes out of your eye. It travels to the things that you are viewing, picks up the electrical signals, the bio photons of those things. Not always bio, sometimes they're just photons, but there's bio photons also, which come off of living things. And that goes back into your eye, which are receptors, which pick up this information. It goes into the brain, goes into a transformer. The transformer turns it into electrical signals, and those signals are broadcast inside the cave, the dark cave. Things you hear, information hits your ears. It goes inside the coils, inside your ears, and there's little hairs in there that picks up the vibration, these subtle vibrations and the tones and the frequency. Then it goes into your brain, and it goes through the transformer, and it turns them into electrical signals. When you taste something, you know, it turns it into electrical signals. Your tongue sends the information through the nerves to your brain. When you feel things, they're all being converted, but they're being converted a lot of times based on what you know. Or what you already believe based on your programming. If, if they didn't tell you that you could break a cinder block with your hand and you don't believe it, you can't do it. Even though we have actually done this. I remember when I was in school, you know, in this one class, you know, learning how to do this, the, the psychological kinesiology. You know, they, they gave us a big piece of wood. And they said, everybody in class, you don't graduate till you break the wood. People were hitting this wood all day. Their hands bleeding and hurt and black and blue. Until one lady got up, she was a really older lady who was in the wheelchair, and she got up and broke the wood because she said, this is the only thing I have is I'm going to use everything I have to what? Separate the molecules in this wood, and she did it. Once that lady broke the wood, all the 3,000 people in this class began to break the wood because you saw that it was possible. So some of the things you don't know are possible or not possible because you don't know they're possible. So when I tell you that when you're looking down in the microscope, you're looking up in space, you may say, oh, come on, B, what are you talking about? Because everything above is below. The microcosm and the microcosm are mirror images of each other being projected through time, the time-space continuum. But there's all these agreements that you have that have you seeing, thinking, and feeling the way you do. It's an agreement. These are millions and millions of agreements that you're making every day. So what you're seeing is a bundle of energy, right, that has come together and you call it this thing. That's not really what it is. Like this thing about an atom. They talk about an atom. Do you know they've never really seen an atom? They don't know how big or how small it really is. They keep talking about everything is made of atoms. They don't even agree of what uh, that an atom looks the way it looks. What you're experiencing sometimes, you think you've agreed that this is what you're experiencing, but somebody right next to you who's sitting next to you is having a totally different experience. It's because it has to do with how your energy is hitting the quantum field. The quantum field is full of possibilities. It's just, it's, it's just chaotic. It's chaos. All possibilities depends on how you put it, put it all together. So your reality may not actually be factual, even though it's real to you. That reality, right, may not be an actual fact. That's just what you believe. You see, I never believed that I'd be able to do, be a public speaker. I, I never thought I could. So if when I got in front of people, you know, I, I couldn't speak. You know what I'm saying? If I did, I'd stammer and stutter. I, I couldn't do it. I'm nervous. Well, how am I speaking right now? How is this happening? Because something happened where the spell was broken. Something happened where all of a sudden I saw a new reality. And I realized that they were. it was not about me. It was we. When I took away me and got into we, it opened up the galaxy so that all of the beings, all of the ancestors, all of the different realms of being that I was allowing would come through me. As I'm speaking right now, it's not me, it's a we. We are a universe. 
Your body is the galaxy. You're talking about traveling to space. You travel inner space inside of you, inside of every cell, are galaxies upon galaxies upon galaxies. It's a multiverse. It's a hyperdimensional. It's actually, you know, it's a quantum hyperdimensional universe, omniverse. It's a musical theater, and it's all sound because all light is sound. All frequencies are based on sound. How frequently is it happening? It's all frequencies. Now, okay, we're standing here. We're talking right now on, on, on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? We're doing this thing. And we are having this experience, but this experience is not, it's not as solid as you think. It's just an agreement. And we can break agreements, make agreements anytime we like. If we get in the right space, if we get to a certain place where there is a quantum shift, where two universes or two omniverses or two spaces, two dimensions come together for a minute, and you have a new experience. How many of you have had a new experience since you, the God Power event? I mean, it's amazing the amount of phone calls and messages and emails that we're getting about what happened when the people started, you know, doing the exercises that I was giving in the God Power event. I didn't even tell you technically what these exercises did because I didn't want to I don't want to make it too conscious because we become too conscious. And the more conscious you become, actually the, the more ignorant you become to some of your intuition unless you learn how to balance it. Because knowledge is based on the knowledge of old people. Knowledge of before other times. The knowledge that you have may not be all factual. It's just that's what you believe. And that's what you, you know, it's turned into concrete. That's your foundation, your belief system, your religion, your club, your color, your culture, your stuff. I'm a musician. I can say, well, you know, people say, well, you know, you want to make some music? I don't make music. I play music. I don't make it. It comes through me. I allow it to come through me. It's like the book, Conversations with God, where the guy just puts his, his pen on the paper and it starts writing. When you are able to allow the universe to work through you, now you're breaking three, free of these agreements that you have that everything you're seeing and feeling and whatever is exactly the way it is. It's not. It's a projection. It's like we're in a huge video game. You see? And we're all a part of this collective consciousness, right? That's working. And it's, it's, everything is happening at one time. All times are happening at the same time. All vibrations, all sounds, all knowledge. It's all happening at the same time, but it's based on your channel. What channel are you on? What is your frequency? Some people are just going to be angry and upset no matter what. I got some people that are upset with me. They said, well, Dr. B, you know, you, 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 you make too much fun of this thing. You, you know, you're always talking, making faces and stuff. Well, you should stop that. Why? This is serious. And my name is Dr. B. Serious. I am being, right, who we are able to be. And we need to bring some levity to it. Because I think we're going to find out that the creator is a, is, a, is a comedian. I think you're going to find that out, that this is like, you know, we went to like a, an amusement park. Amusement park Earth or Gaia. I think you're right. <laughs> and when you get it, then you begin to say, wait, I could break the spell? How is it that, you know, there's people who have had traumatic lives and became very successful because they're able to take the trauma and compost it? They're able to take this stuff and use it as fuel. Once you break the spell of your mind and realize that it's just what you think, it's how you have agreed what things are. It's your references. Now, I have had some actual experiences that let me know that the reality we think is reality is not. I have had some out-of-body, inner-body, multi-dimensional, trans-dimensional experiences. I've actually had them several times, starting when I was a child. You think you're here, but where is here? Where is here? I'm here. It's impossible for you to be here. You're everywhere. You're everywhere at one time. You just have made agreements 
that you're here and that you're in this body and this is your name and this is your, you know, you this is what you profess to be. This is your house. My, me, 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 me. See, we got into this me thing instead of we. So what we're seeing, what we're experiencing is based on a lens or a filter of things that we have experienced or seen or think that we have experienced or seen. And then those experiences become hardened right into our character. This is why they say, you know, it begins with your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become actions. Actions become habits. Habits harden into character. When you change up any of these things, even a 1% change changes everything. So what we're hearing is that the people who have experienced the God power, the blueprint for God power experience, because it wasn't an event, it was an experience. It had a lot to do with the day that Brother Rich, that you chose. Even when you told me what day it was, I was like, whoa, I did the mathematics on the day. I, do you, 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 do you, why are you, oh, it just came to me. Oh, you know, it's because stuff just comes to you. So you're not living in the same, you know, the same dimension as somebody else. You have your own special place and there's a special, unique set of principles and energies and life forces and photons and bio photons and elements coming through you every particular second. So that is your unique signature of the all. So the day you picked was amazing. Then three days later was the real Christmas or the Christmas Eve. I was like, do you know what's happening? That the how the universe is opening, and that this is the particular time when Sirius and the Earth and the Sun are in perfect alignment. And some people are saying that they, they just got the event. Some people are just now watching the event and they're having the same experience. Because guess what? Sirius, the sun, and the earth are still in alignment. They're going to be in a certain arrangement until March. So it's not about, oh, I missed it. If you say you missed it, I guess you did. But if you're ready to obtain what it is, then you tap into that blueprint that's inside of you. That's everything. Everything is everything. There's only nowness to now, as we say. So what you're seeing, what you're experiencing has a lot to do with your mindset. When you change your mindset, everything changes. So like me, you know, I had a lot of I had a lot of feelings and beliefs until I had some of these other experiences where I saw other realms where I've seen other beings. You see, what we call aliens is us. We're aliens. You, can you imagine how some of the beings on the planet, you know, this is, you know, there's more insects here than anything else. Well, actually, there's more, more uh, mycelium here than anything else. But insects, could you imagine how they're looking at us? And, you know, we, we say, well, why don't the aliens communicate with us? Well, why, you can't communicate with an ant, but you think an ant is ignorant, but ants and bees right? Ants and bees, they have some of the most complex societies there is. We can't do what they can do. You have your own set of principles, but it's changeable. What you call impossible becomes possible when you know the exercises. So when the folks begin to do the exercise in the God Power event, the cross crawls. Most folks are having a huge change in their life when they do this thing called cross cross. I didn't tell them what the cross cross would do. Cross cross begins to change your perception of the universe. Because we begin to take the 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 the, the visual the, the the kinesthetic auditory and visual experience and change it. We change the way the corpus callosum behind your head because see the left side of your head controls the right side of your body. And the right side of your head controls the left side of your body. So behind your neck is the corpus callosum. That's the crossover. That's where the nerves cross. Well, see, you'll notice that usually when you cross your legs or when you talk, you lean a certain way. You see, this is this is that neuro-linguistic programming. You lean a certain way. You look a certain way. You have certain expressions when you're feeling certain things. And when you begin to change that and you begin to change the way your eyes are moving, 
just when you do the cross cross, you're talking about taking the left brain and the right brain and reversing them by doing this little exercise, this march. It changes everything. So this is why the man in Australia said when he did this at exactly 3.30, it was 3.30 in, in Australia, and UFOs popped up in the sky. His whole family, they got pictures of them. This is why the people in Mexico at the exact same time said all of a sudden they saw dolphins. A lady was up in the Aspens, up in, you know, one of the biggest, you know, living forests in the world. The Aspens began to move. She was in the Aspens in the cabin. I said, I, I guess she was in the cabin. And she said the, the ground began to rumble. Because they were having an experience not based on your knowledge and what you think you know. They were having an experience where they were shifting the energy in their body. So what they were seeing was changing. This is why I said, first, you're going to do the exercise with your eyes up and to the left. Why did I say eyes up and to the left? Because that is, I'm tapping into the visual cortex of memory of the past. Eyes up and to the right. Now I'm saying tap into the visual cortex of the construct future. It hasn't even happened yet. So what you what you saw in the past, what you think you saw, and what you think you'd like to see in the future, they get confused. So we brought it to the center, to the now. And then we did that with the auditory, with, with the auditory level, the ears. So I had you do your eyes again another way. And then your eyes went another way. All this time, you're tapping back and forth crossing the corpus callosum. You're leaving this dimensional space. You're having an out-of-body experience. And because I didn't tell you about it, you didn't get to make it so conscious and figure it out to see if your parents agreed, if the government agrees, if the church agrees, all these agreements. You didn't have any agreements because you were in the unknown. And when you're in the unknown, that's the place where everything is happening at. So these exercises that change the way your body moves, changes the way you move through this quantum field, it changes you. So this is why, you know, martial artists, I mean, the martial artist is not going to sit there and wait to see if you're going to swing at them. How does the martial artist know the block or move before it happens? Because the martial artist is having a field of, of, of expression that is actually what they call precognition. You could feel the wave before it comes. So imagine this. When you look out at the world, you're feeling about what you're going to see. When you're driving, you're going to see other cars because you know you're going to see other cars. How do you know what a car looks like? You think everybody sees cars and taste strawberries the same? Everybody's the same. We're not the same. We're all having a different quantum experience in this field. Now, this, this subject that I'm talking about, it's, it's challenging to even talk about because it's so vast. It's outside of the current knowledge. But I could just tell you that it's, it's a mystery, and most things that are mysterious cannot be truly explained. Some of the things that I've seen that I've been, that I've, you know, I, I, I've actually seen gold bricks levitate. My teacher levitated a big gold brick off the ground. With his mind. You could do that too. If he could do it, you could do it. But when you're in a prison of your mind, then what you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're feeling, what you're making agreements to. You know, I, I remember I did this, 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 you know, I was working with some rappers and I did this beat and it was an African rhythm. And instead of it being like a 4 4 beat, like doom, 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 I turned it into a 6 8 and I told him to rap to it. So I went, they said, oh, man, 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 no, no, man, what's that? We can't rap to that. I said, why not? That ain't hip-hop. I said, why is it not hip-hop? Because, you know, it don't have, you know, it don't feel like hip-hop, man. That ain't hip-hop. Another time I was doing a, uh, somebody had me producing a gospel record, right? So, you know, I made the record and I turned it in and the people I turned it into, they said, oh, this is not gospel, Dr. B. I said, why? They said, well, you didn't mention Jesus enough times. I think you might have mentioned Jesus once. And the lady told me how many times Jesus had to be in the song for it to be a gospel record. And what kind of feel. And the music was too bright. It was too happy. Where a lot of times the religious music are in these keys that are all about, you know, this is about subservancy. This is about slavery. This is about toil. This is about pain and struggle. So we have these agreements that, you know, it's got to be like this is R&B. Like R&B has changed. Everything changes based on the people's vision. 
especially if you're in a group consciousness. But the bottom line is, once you break out of that spell, once you stop walking along with that crowd, you begin to do something totally new. So Einstein, they say he was unteachable. Well, how is it that half the things we got going on right now got to do with these people or that people that created things that were unteachable, that, that got out of school, who weren't told that something was impossible? So you're seeing and experiencing things, right? that you were told, and if you could get out of that and realize that everything is made of particles, subatomic particles, even what they think about the body. I mean, how, how is it they just discovered, they just recently discovered three new organs in the body they never knew. They just discovered the, this, just discovered the endocannabidiol system in the 70s. That's the one that's connected to cannabis. They just discovered it. They didn't think that it existed. They thought the pineal gland all this time was nothing. It didn't do anything. It has no use. So once you begin to break these agreements and get out of your head, then all of a sudden everything opens up. So like right now, you know, I'm not sure what's going to happen next. It's happening. I'm not sure what Brother Rich is going to say. I mean, even the title of this class, of this, of this, this, this talk today, he told me one thing last night that it was going to be about. Then he told me, what was it? What was it like earlier? When did you call me? <laughs> Yesterday, you had one title. I said, oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. I, you know, figure that's it. Wrote it down. <laughs> then the day, was it earlier today? Was I don't know how many days ago it was, but you've had three titles. This is the third one, yeah. Then I go on the internet. And I'm like, people are calling me. Dr. B, this is going to be deep. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be real deep. How? What is he talking about? But what he's doing is he's tapping into a realm that is causing you to get into a place because you don't know. He's a genius. He's taking you to some place where the words are put together, where you're in a space where you have no idea where this is going. So it has to do with him being a visionary. He's a visionary. He sees it on the event horizon. He's got people who follow that because people right now would like something new. They need something new. They need to feel something. People say, well, Dr. B, you know, you make us feel stuff. And, you know, the hardcore brothers is calling. Talking about, I cry every time I watch the God Power thing, man. It's so emotional. As soon as the music comes on, man, I start crying. And I'm crying. And, well, guess what? That's because we're moving energy that was stuck. And some, some folks say, man, I don't cry, man. I don't never cry. Why am I crying? It's because once you begin to break out of the cell and once you begin to feel your body change, you've got to get those the energy out of those cells. you got to break the energy that's bonded in those cells. Crying breaks off. the You, know, you start studying dendrites, the little nerve endings that are connected to the tissue that's holding your issue. People would like to feel something. That's why right now live and live performances are coming back again. People want to go see a band. You know, we've been stuck in the house, you know, for whatever reason, for years. And we haven't been out. You go hear a live band, especially if the band is good. You can't record that. You can't really, truly record the experience of a live band. And I don't mean these bands that are out there playing right now. They actually got, a, you know, they got Pro Tools or a whole program playing. They just acting like they playing. No, I'm talking about people that are real musicians. Or a rapper that's rapping off the dome, you know what I'm saying, freestyle. And dropping some stuff that's so deep and twisting up some words in the moment. He's open. He's an open channel. People like that. People like it where it's jazz, where it's love, where it's improvisation. Because true love is improvisation. True love you cannot control. Don't tell me you love somebody, but you're trying to control them. You're in a relationship. A relationship and love don't go together. Oh, boy, Dr. B, what you talking about now? A relationship means that I love you under these contracts. It's a ship. It's closed. I only love you if you and if we. But if you get out of that, I don't love you anymore. I had to get out. I fell out of love with him quick because, you know, he or she, but blah, 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 or they. You know what I'm saying? Love is relating. Love is open. Love you can't control. So if you have a vision, here we go, Brother Rich. If you have a vision of what love is, 
and it's stuck. It's concrete. And where did you get it from? Maybe your parents. Maybe you saw a movie. A lot of people get this from movies and tell live vision about what love is. They, right, if they're stuck and that's their contract, they're not able to realize what true love is because they've got this contractual love. If you love me, then you'd blah, 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 blah. We have that in relationships. I remember the woman told me, you know, if I loved her, I'd know what kind of candy she wanted on Valentine's Day. That's when Valentine's Day was a happening thing. You know, you had to do it. So I brought some candies from the store. You know what I'm saying? They're at the drugstore next to the drugs. That's a deep thing. It's got a whole lot of candy at the drugstore. Just think about that for a minute. They got a coal, a whole aisle of coal and pain medicines. They got candy, and they got drugs, and they got makeup. I've even seen some drugstores that have clothes now made out of polyester and fake materials. Nothing totally natural. But that's in a whole other story. My point is, I picked up some candy for the women because, you know, she need candy. The problem was, I got the wrong brand. Now, I have never been with the woman on, on, on uh, I almost called it Thanksgiving. It's all about the same thing. But anyway, I've never been with her. We only been together for six months. So we never had a Valentine's Day. We never had a Valentine's Day discussion. So the woman, she opens the box and she throws it down. What is this? I says, it's Valentine's Day candy. She said, I hate these. If you loved me, you would have known I hate these. You should have asked me what kind of candies I wanted. I was like, what? I said, are you serious? Oh, she was real serious. She was furious. I grabbed my little coat and jacket. She said, where are you going? I said, I'm leaving here. This ain't love. You crazy. Them candies has got you crazy. It's that sugar and that red dye, number five, six, seven, 20, 30, 40, and blue dye, and all of them artificial flavors and them fake cherries that's inside them things. I can't do it because I don't like being fake. When it's real, you get caught up in it. So love is when you're seeing what's happening now. When you're relating, you're having a connection, you're being intimate, and you're intercoursing with what's happening now. The course that you're meeting is the course that you're on that's in a flow state. That's love. When you look out and you look and you see there's a whole lot of things going on in the world, but you're, you're, you're selectively choosing what looks like love. You're listening to conversations. You're listening for what sounds like love. And when you hear other things, you begin to filter it. And people say all the time, well, Dr. B, all this deep stuff, and you know, how come they didn't how come they didn't teach us to us? They hid us. They didn't hide it. They didn't know it, first of all. Now, some of them did know it and they hid it a little bit. But if you know, if you you went along with it, you knew something else. You had a feeling. You usually have a little gut feeling that something's not right. But we like to blame people for hiding information. We have got to a point where we love being the victim. We've, agree, we've made agreements to be a victim. We're a victim of the relationship. I can't break up with her because I love her. But I don't like her. Or, you know, I don't like him. I hate him, but I love him. I can't leave him. So we stay stuck in situations because we're not open enough to receive the information that's truly coming to us. So there's information that's coming to you that is on an open field. There's a field out there. There's an open field. The quantum field, the universal field of possibilities is there. Once you begin to know what you're looking for, and here's where the rubber meets the road and the trees meet the dirt. If you have no idea what you're looking for, you'll agree with whatever they give you. What are you looking for? What would you like? And when you start describing what you like, you better, you know, say what you'd like and not mention in what you'd like what you would not like. So me, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I see things all day long. I saw a lot today. Some of it, you know, it was, it could have been considered crazy. I went out in the world today. I went to the store, went around. It was wild out there. Did I look at it all in focus? I just saw it briefly. But I looked for what? Pleasure. People was on the freeway driving crazy, blowing horns. Somebody flips you off. I'd wave at him. Oh, thank you. Blessings, my brother. He just flipped you off. 
Yeah. I, I have to let that hurt me. And see, we haven't gotten all punked out with all these little words and all these little symbols and even emojis. Somebody attempted to cuss me out one day with emojis. I man, this blew my mind because I had to ask the children. <laughs> I had to ask the children, what are they saying? Oh, they're uh, mad at you, Dr. B. You're going to cuss me out with little yellow emojis. This is crazy. You can't tell me. Tell me. At least type it out. People can't type no more. You know what I'm saying? They don't just push an emoji. You know what I mean? The little heart says, I love you. They don't, you don't, they don't love me because you pushed a little funny heart. It's action. Love is action word. It's not just a noun. It's not a name, naming word. So my point is, is that we are perceiving things based on the lens and the filter that we have programmed ourselves with. Take it away from who did it to you. Because once you get off, once you get off that field, once you get out the prison of the mind and who did what to you and say, I allowed. This is when you become powerful. I allowed them to program me that way. I allowed myself to be a prisoner. I allowed myself to be whatever. I'm not saying that things didn't happen to you, but it has to do with how you deal with it. It's how you respond, how you react. And if you're reacting, you're acting from the past. So your vision, we're talking about vision here. Your vision has to be clear. You have to have a clear vision. You have to be able to fly above the storm. You have to be able to walk like look at look. You, I, I, I've seen this many times. People having an argument at a, at a at a cookout. Family members. There's a lot of arguments going to these cookouts. Family comes together. We love each other, but there's always arguing and fighting and disagreement. So these people are arguing. You feel like they're about to fight, and a butterfly comes flies right between them. You think the butterfly is affected by this argument? Because the butterfly is not focusing on that energy. The butterfly flies wherever it pleases and pleases wherever it flies. The butterfly is not, it's not even related to the caterpillar. They don't even have the same DNA. But a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? They're trying to be butterflies, but the caterpillar still got them. They're trying to be wealthy, but poor still got them. They're trying to be kings and queens, but they're still pompers and victims. What I am saying is, once you change your perspective, and once you break out of the prison of the mind, you're going to see things differently. And think about it. When you talk, you hear your voice, you're talking, you hear it in your ears, you hear it in your bones. What about when you talk to yourself? Who? How is that possible that you could talk to yourself? And actually here, you can say things and somebody else in there, something else hears what you just said. Inside the cave of your head. What is that all about? And you, you know, we get upset. We see somebody, you know, we see people on the corner just talking. So, all right, he's crazy. He's been talking to himself. Well, what's, you, you might talk to yourself too, but you've learned how to filter it. You're not crazy. Talking to yourself all day long, but you just keep your mouth shut. Where this person is open and expressing themselves. Somebody takes off all their clothes and they're naked in the street. Oh my God, they they, they went crazy, just took all off all of his clothes. Because your perspective is that the nude body is something bad. When you were born, you're nude too. You just got some coverings. See, it's these agreements. So what is good, what is bad, what is up, what is down, it's all I got, it's a perspective. Because when you're looking up in the sky, it's impossible for you to be looking up. We live on a ball. So where's up? So when I look in the microscope, I don't look in a, down in the microscope. I'm looking up in a microscope. It has to do with the key word here called your telos. Mm. What is your telos? Anybody know what the word telos means? Telos has to do with your objective. What are you focusing on? What, where would you like to be? 
That's your telos. A telescope. And you have to point it at something. You can't be trying to look out at the ocean and see a boat on the ocean and be pointing at the trees and bushes. You've got to point it in the right direction. Now, if every time you try to look out at the ocean to see the boat, somebody comes and moves it and pushes it, so you can you can see mountains, you can but you can't see the ocean because you're allowing other people to control your telos, and they keep telling you, huh, what to do and how to think. You're being told what to think, how to think, when to think, and you think that that thought is yours. And then fear comes on after a while where you, you know, you, 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 you're afraid to break free because of what they're going to say. You're worried about what they're going to say, what they're going to say. When I got out of that, that's what changed me. I don't care what you say. I'm crazy. That's right. I am. You're a failure. Yes, I'm a failure at the things that you think I should be good at. I'm not good at it. I'm not doing it anymore. You're going to get an F. Well, that means that I'm done. Thank you. I don't have to come here anymore. When you allow yourself to get free from the idea of being hurt and the visions of words hurting you, sticks and stones may break your bones, but what? Words will never hurt you, but now words are so hurtful. It was hurtful. I mean, wow. This is a deep. Emojis. You got a set of emojis. Five emojis came across your text. You done broke down crying. I've seen it. Emojis. Those are not even your emotions. These are symbols, right? And they're all in yellow. There's a whole science behind them being yellow because, you know, you don't have the courage to text me. Never mind, just call me. But people, you know, we, you know, people have become transhumans. They, they, they're controlled by plastic ideas, plastic devices. When you get back to being all carbon, right, carbon has to do with a physical experience that's based on dark matter. And that means that you have to have a strong telos, which is going to take courage to have, because you got to be able to row your boat in the direction that you would like to row it in no matter what. No matter what they say you're going to see. Because once you get in that boat, they're going to tell you, well, there's sea monsters out there. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a giant octopus squid with, with razor sharp teeth that eats everybody that goes out on the ocean. There's monsters. There's killers. There's spiritual police that will arrest you and beat you and taser you to death. The people will put voodoo on you. Oh my God. He put something on me. Somebody put something on me. Well, you had to know that they put it on you. You see what I'm saying? There's agreements that we have. Once you break these spells, you'll see different. You'll be able to see things moving through your room, right? That you couldn't see before because you were blocked. When I'm in the studio making music, I can, I can see the sound. I can taste the notes. People don't understand it. You know, you we all have this synesthesia where we could change the way we're perceiving and what we're feeling and how we're feeling and what channels we're allowing. So the matrix, right? There's many levels of matrixes. But the matrix that has been programmed and that's been hardened into your character, most of it is based on BS. It's based on lies. It's based on, you know, and you can say, well, somebody did it to me. Well, if you're listening to my voice and you hear me right now, then you know that you can change all this right now. The people that did the God power experience, most of the people are having a huge change in their life. Oh, I said, just take sugar out of your out of your diet for 28 days. Just white sugar, brown sugar, processed sugar. Just take that out. It will change you because sugar shuts down your brain. It shuts down the matrix in your head. It shuts down. It gives you an optical illusion. I need you to hear me again. Just white sugar gives you an optical illusion because when the energy comes in through your eyes and it's converted into electrical signals, it's shorted out by sugar. Whew. Man. You're not seeing what, you know, I remember in L.A. they had, they had the, the grocery stores when, you know, went, went on strike. 
Guess why the people was upset? Because they couldn't get sugar. People went crazy. That's when Trader Joe's blew up. I remember this. Nobody had heard of no Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's was the only ones that was open and they had sugar. People started shopping. His oh wow, this, this is a good little place here. Trader Joe's. Because you're hooked on these sweet things and these sweet ideas and these sweet words and these sweet feelings and all of these things. And you never get out of your comfort zone and you stay in that comfort zone. So you die in the comfort zone when you got to expand and get out of your comfort zone and go into the place where you have no vision, where you can be blindfolded. How long have you, have you, ever, you ever turned off all the lights in your house? Turn off all the lights, turn off the, 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 the modems and the televisions and block out everything. Just, just. Find your way around your home with no light. Walk down the steps. Don't say, oh, I might fall, because then you're falling. You get in the car, oh, God, I hope the police don't get me. The police is coming. It's summertime. Oh, I hope the mosquitoes don't sting me. The mosquitoes was five blocks away. Guess what? Somebody wants to be stung. Oh, oh we've been so oppressed. Yeah, we have been oppressed, but guess what? When people have been oppressed for so long, guess what? They become oppressive. I need you to hear me again. Many people who have been oppressed become oppressors. They may not oppress other people, but they may have oppressive words, oppressive thoughts. They may oppress their own self. So now that they're oppressed, they become suppressed, and they become depressed, and they become repressed, and their vision changes. So you could show them something and say, this is a beautiful thing. This, is, this, this crystal or this particular elixir is going to change your life. If you already think that it's not going to work, it's not. If you already have doubt. Mm. So your eyes, your ears, all of your senses are based on the programming. And once you can break the spell, which happens sometimes when people have a traumatic thing happen to them, everything changes. So me... <laughs> I've had a lot of traumatic things happen, so I was able to, I had to break the spell. I had nothing to fall back on. I didn't have no safety net. So you, I've snapped. And and let me just say this real quick, Dr. B. Um, what you're saying is like extremely interesting um, in terms of where our mind state is at. That's what we we'll end up seeing. Uh, just through my life, I found that, say I'm in a, say I'm in a mind state where I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about limitation or lack or something. If I see a word, if a word appears, like, let's say, like, oh, I'm trying to find a word with a P because I want to make an example. I can't make, well, let, let's just say I, I, I see a word. I'm, I'm about to read a book, right? So I'm about to read this book, Dr. B. Let's say instead of music, this word said something like, um, Phrygian. Now that's a word, a music word, Phrygian. Say it said Phrygian. If my mind state is a lack mind state, when I initially see the word, I may think I'm seeing the word poor. So let's say I have uh, sex on my mind all day. I'm thinking about uh, vagina and titties and shit like that. If I see a word with a P, I might think that word is pussy all of a sudden. So what I'm saying is it's almost like the hologram, there's glitches where at first, when you look at something, you see immediately what's on your mind. Then you'd be like, hold on, what's that? Oh, I'm bugging out. I'm bugging out. Like, let's say uh, um, me and my girl will argue. She'll be like, Rich, I'm like, did she just call me bitch? You know, because I'm, I'm, I'm on the frequency of argument or, or anxiety or whatever. So it's like wherever you're at, you may actually glitch the matrix and see that. Then you got to, like, shake yourself and like, okay, I'm just seeing things. Okay. It, it really didn't say that. It really says this, but I always found that to be very interesting about life. And it shows how much of a, a hologram this is that you could break it for a 10th of a second. You could break it and you see what's on your mind. And then you're like, Oh shit. No, no. Okay. I'm bugging out. Okay. Brother. If you have a limited mindset, like mm -hmm. our language is limited. Yeah. You only explain things based on the, you know, the, the group of words that you have. You only are working from the knowledge that you have until you know something else. So like, you know, when I used to do, you know, a lot of my, you know, workshops, live workshops in person. 
we would do the le- we would do the levitation. The people would freak out. Mm. Some folks would run out. Oh God, it's the devil. Dr. B is the devil. Mm. Why? Because you just saw something that you thought was impossible, and it had to be something evil. Mm. Damn. So there was a man. <clears throat> excuse me. Who lived in a distant country, in a distant land. And he heard about the magic wishing well all of his life. And he decided that he wanted to find the magic wishing well. So he searched every day of his life. And on his 33rd birthday, he was in the woods and he found an abandoned well. And he's standing there. And he says, wow, I wonder if this is the wishing well. Let's test it. And he says... I'd like to have a wonderful house on the hill. And he does all this shaking and he's doing all this praying. I need a house on the hill, a beautiful house on the hill. And he opens his eyes and on the hill is a beautiful house. He's like, oh my God, okay, wait a minute. Maybe I just didn't notice that before. The house was already there. Okay, now let let me try something else. He he looks around, he notices that he looks so he can see everything around him. And he says, okay, now I'm gonna close my eyes. And 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 he's telling the wishing well, please, I'd like a wonderful new car, like a, you know, Rolls Royce ghost or whatever beautiful car, you know, great car. I'd like to have it now. And he opens his eyes and boom, the car's there. He's like, oh my God, this is deep. This is getting really deep. Oh my God. And then his next one is money. I need money, endless money. He got a credit card, a black credit card with an endless amount that he can spend on it. Boom. Then he says one more thing. I'd love to have a beautiful wife. She's amazing. She can cook. She can do everything. She's a businesswoman. She's an all-around woman. She's beautiful. She's loving. She's all these things. And boom, a woman pops up. He's happy. And then he says, oh, my God. This is too good. This must be the devil. And guess what? He trips, falls into the well, and dies. Because he had just broken out of what he knew to be real and possible. So if something is too good, you know, we think that it's got to be evil. Like, we think people that are rich are evil. A lot of people think that. Money is the root to all evil. How is that? Money don't do nothing. Money doesn't do anything. I'm a worried about the evil that people do that don't have money. Or don't have access. I'm I'm a little, you know, I'm I'm a little suspect of that. I'm not worried. I'm, I'm suspect of people that have nothing. You ever let somebody loan something, right? My father used to always say, if somebody has nothing, then don't let them loan your something. Because they don't recognize it. They don't respect it. And guess what? I let this guy borrow my guitar one time. He don't have a guitar. He's a great guitar player, but he don't have a guitar. I let him borrow my guitar. This was the $1,000 guitar. Guess what? He breaks the guitar. The guitar is broken. He drops it off. He says, hey, man, he leaves it in the case. He don't even tell me he broke it. The guitar is broken. He just, because you give people something that have nothing or they feel like nothing and they don't know how to respect something. So guess what? You already have everything already in you, but you may not realize you have everything. So you may feel like you're poor, broke, lonely. And you may feel that people that have a lot are bad. They're evil. We keep talking about the corporations are controlling the world. The first thing you need to do is go start you a corporation, an LLC, an S Corp, a C Corp. But you heard it was evil. Oh, God, but, you know, I, I, I don't want to have to pay all them taxes. You're going to pay some taxes, but we'll show you how to not pay taxes or to pay as little tax. By investing in certain things. But see, it has to do with your vision. If you have this idea that the world is terrible, it gets terrible. It expands. If you think that this has got to be the devil and it's got to be evil and everything is working against you, it does. But when you change your mindset, when people would see the levitation, they couldn't believe it. When folks start experiencing what they've experienced in the last two weeks, I mean, there's so many 
things that have transpired in just two weeks because people for the first time may have been actually having a real Christmas, a real crystallized imagination within themselves and the penaline was coming down their body and they realized it and that penaline was going down to 33 meter vertebrae and dying vertebrae and going and dying on the cross and coming back up and shooting out into the galaxy. That happened on the 9th and the 10th. The people that were ready to break out and there were so many things happening in the God Power event, they changed. There's people whose credit has already been cleared. When Brother Billy broke out the people, he gave the, he gave the plugs. This is who you call to get your credit together. This is who you call to get a loan. I had a life insurance policy that just been sitting forever. I had one conversation with the lady. She turned it into a whole life life insurance but i never knew how to do this and then she said now you can put money into it and it's like an investment tool that happened in like two days because i didn't have knowledge of it but once i got knowledge of it i began to change things because i listen very carefully i write things down i don't go into it say all oh, this probably don't work because i don't have i don't have that 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 safety net some folks got the safety net you got to get rid of your safety net you got to change your vision and become a visionary. You got to create things, right, that have not been created. You got to do something that people are saying is impossible. And it changes the way you perceive the world because you're just energy. You're a bundle of energy. You can change everything if you are focused enough and what courageous enough to step into the unknown, step into the darkness. You were talk, told to be afraid of the dark. That's where it's all happening at. In the darkness. But if you're carrying all this stuff and it's hardened into character, it gets challenging. So there are things that you can do when you're ready to break these spells. That's why I offer, I have all these courses. I took all, I took 14 of my best classes and bundled them. They're at elevationtime.com. I bundled 14 of my best classes over the last two years in one package for folks that really would like to study. They really would like to study. The God Power events up on the websites. You can go get it. There's classes and workshops, and some of you are teachers, but you didn't know you was a teacher. You don't remember because nobody in your family believed it because you didn't go to college. But we have to stop professing with certain things, right? A professor is a person who professes. This is your profession. You profess to be a great plumber. I don't know. I had a plumber come here the other day. I had to get him off the property. We had more leaks when he came than, you know, than we than before he got here. Oh, he's the best. You know, he had on a white suit, white gloves. It's not about what you profess. It's what you become. You have to be it. You can't just say that we are royalty and not be it. You have to live it. And royalty does not necessarily mean how much stuff you have. It's how much energy you have. It's how focused you are. It's how much of a telos you have. But sometimes you got to stop telling everybody your telos. <laughs> Whoo! Stop giving everybody your vision. Whoo! You got to crystallize it for yourself. You got to crystallize your imagination and stay focused on your desire no matter what. But if you get into this, you know, you know, competition, you're comp you're competing all the time. The only thing that you really need to be working with on competition is competing with your old self. Cuz the whole world has changed. The whole world just changed in the last two weeks. The whole planet changed. Everything has, has changed. People have been seeing stuff in the sky. People have been experiencing something. A lady told me the other day she had $1,000. When she did the God Power event, she had $1,000. She went to the mailbox two days after the event, and there was a check for $3,500. That somebody owed or something, some insurance thing from way back that she forgot about, and it was thirty five hundred dollars. So now she has forty five hundred dollars. She took the forty five hundred dollars and she went to Brother Billy Carson and invested in one of his investment liquidity pools or whatever. And now it's making money. The money is making money. But sometimes we got to see something and feel something and have an experience to say, yo, wow, this is a new world. But, we, you know, and that's why I'm glad that, you know, we're doing that forbidden solutions. 
for humanity with, with Billy Carson in a couple weeks because we need solutions now because some of this old stuff don't work. We keep talking about the problem, the problem, the problem. So your vision is hardened. And what you're doing is you're sending a signal out looking for drama from your eyes. You're listening for drama in conversations. When you're tasting food, oh, I pro it probably don't taste good. And guess what? It don't taste good. You know, I had a cookout and I had a bunch of people come and all the food was vegan. And they were eating these burgers. Oh, my God, these are good burgers. You take me make a good burger. Oh, wow, this is good. Then my uncle said, you know, where, where do you get these burgers? What are these burgers? I said, those are vegan burgers. He says, what do you mean they're vegan? There ain't no, ain't no beef in here? There ain't no beef. He says, yeah, I knew something was wrong. I, I knew something was right. I didn't want to say nothing. I, I don't even feel like eating the rest of it. What? He was eating and ate three of them. You'd have been back to the grill. Every time I look up, he at the grill. He at the grill. He at the grill. Soon as I tell him that they're vegan and they're not beef or a hybrid crossbred cow, which is a combination of a buffalo and an oxen. Soon as I tell you that this is not an actual chicken, which is a combination of a jungle fowl, a couple different types of jungle fowl, and a bird that's like a vulture, crossbred in 1507 by the Chinese. The minute I tell you that it's not lamb, which is a, what, a llama and a mountain goat crossed together. The minute I tell you that that's not a crossbred a rat, a cat, and a dog, or what they call a pig. Your mind is crystallized on it's not real. I'm not saying that all these veggie burgers are the bomb either. I'm just saying that you have a mindset where you need things to be a certain way. So you're hardened and you're stuck and you're crystallizing your world. And that's what you're supposed to be. So stay there. But this world is dying. You're going to need a new vision, a new earth, a new mindset. Are you ready for it? You got to grab it. You got to know it. You got to have it. I don't care how poor you think you are. Wealth could be right around the corner. I don't care how sick. You think you are. Health could be right around the corner. I don't care how lonely you think you are. Guess what? Love could be right around the corner. Once you get your expectations right, you got to control the matrix. You don't let it control you. Rich, where you at? I ain't heard from you in a long time, brother. Oh man, I'm 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 just enjoying. I'm enjoying the show. I'm listening. Let me ask you this about um the God Power Workshop and some of the testimonials from people. Uh, what if somebody said somebody earlier said that they got uh an intense spiritual attack a week after the workshop, and I did hear somebody say previously that something like something traumatic happened to them. Uh, a couple of days after the workshop, I think on the Christmas Eve, actually, January 9th. So can you explain maybe why those events may have happened to people who are going to the next level spiritually um, after the workshop? When you have been stuck in a certain way, it, let's say you're crystallized in your way you live your life. Mm hmm. Sometimes when you attempt to make a change, mm -hmm. like you're driving your car and you're going a certain speed and you decide to turn quickly, you hear the resistance of the tires against the road. Because ah! you've made a, a turn. The tires get hot. Sometimes they smoke. If you slam on the brakes, they smoke. Because you've made a quantum shift really quickly. A lot of people are feeling ill right now who took the class. A lot of people are having colds and flus and coughing up stuff all of a sudden. Guess what? Because some of that stuff is the toxic material that you've been carrying most of your life. And some of this stuff is so deep and it's so real and it goes against the grain so deeply that you, your own self, will stop it. Let me tell you, you know, my friend, he used to be a preacher. He's a musician. He used to play for the churches and everything. And he was always trying to get his parents and his mother and whoever to get out of the church. Leave the church. The church is not good. I said, look, you got to leave that alone because this is some elders here and they've been in the church all their lives. No, but the church is this and it's evil and it's that. I said, bro, I said, you, you, being, you might be being a little disrespectful here. He said, well, what do you mean? 
I said, well, where are you going to take them? Okay, they leave the church. You let them know where all this stuff comes from, that the Nicene Council, year 333 or 332, they created a whole lot of stuff. Okay, so now they know, they they with you. Now what? They've been praying and believing and reading their Bible and going to church every Tuesday, every Wednesday, Thursday, sometimes Sunday on the holidays. That's all they've had all their lives. And you're going to snatch it from them? What are they going to do now? Mm. They watch Christian programming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? On TV. You, they, 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 they live there. This is where they're at. So you just can't snatch them from that. This is why sometimes our ego, when we get into these conscious states, you know, we become zealots. Yeah, yeah. You're trying to force people. You, you want to snatch the meat out of it. Let them eat meat if they want to eat meat. That's their business. You got to be focused on your business. But sometimes when folks make a quick change like that or something happens on that level, they, they have a traumatic effect and it's testing them. Mm -hmm. This thing is, this is like a, a, it's an obstacle course. And sometimes you think you're getting somewhere and it's a stop. There's a break because guess what? You're like a martial artist. You got to find your way over it. Sometimes mm -hmm. you got to stop and wait. It's a test. It's only temporary. This is we live in the temperate zone. It's temporary. Now, if you give up, see, I was doing an exercise, Dr. B had, and I had a terrible headache and I had mucus coming out of my ears. I'm not doing it no more. It was making me sick. So you go back to, you know, being sick. It was like the sickness was coming out of you. Right now, a lot of people are having a lot of stuff happen because of what just happened between the earth and the sun. There's these shifts that happen. Yeah. So, you know, you got to be willing to move through that and realize that it's only temporary and you're detoxing from your own self. Some of us are sick of ourselves. We're allergic to ourselves. And people, oh, no, I'm a vegan. I'm, I, all that's all that's all in your head about what you think you are. What would you like to become? Who would you truly like to be? And if you want to be just a zealot preacher and to blame everybody and be mad at everybody and say all the meat is this. And I know some folks as breathitarians, as angry as heck, they eat fruit all day. They're mad. It doesn't make any difference how you eat and how you live. It has to do with who you are internally. So once you begin to change yourself, you're going to go through some change, some struggle. It has not been easy to, for Dr. B to do what Dr. B has done. It's not, it seems easy because I, you know, just because you don't see the life. You don't know how many changes and how much, you know, challenge that somebody's been through. You see, when I write the book about my life, you're going to be blown away. You're going to be like, what? I do have a book coming out, but it's not about my life. It's about parasites. But there's another book about my life. Brother Rich, I could tell this man has had some experiences. First of all, where he comes from is called an experience. <laughs> you, from, <laughs> He comes from the streets of experiences, the things that he's seen out on the corner playing his keyboard and selling tapes. But that's what makes him who he is. So what I'm saying is you are the commander of a vessel. You have to work on your telos. Once you work on your telos, the matrix around you, the quantum field begins to change based on what you're focusing on. You know, uh, 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 once you realize that a hologram is a representation of something, a hologram is a projection. So mm -hmm. remember they did the thing with Michael Jackson, you know what I'm saying? They had Teddy Riley's music and all this stuff playing. It was, you know, and it was Michael Jackson was on the stage and it looked like it was almost him, but it wasn't him. It was a projection of light. We are actually a projection of light. But what we don't know is that we're the projector. You are not just a projection. You are the protect the projector. Once you get this, you say, I'm connected to it all. So there's people. Was that you I was talking to today when I was talking about the lady that didn't have no locks on her door? Was, was I talking to you about that today, Rich Brother? Say that again, talking to me about what? The lady that lived in the in New York, she had all she had no locks on her door. Was that yeah, yeah? You were telling me about that, yeah. So yeah. my friend, he's a musician. He got a studio in his house. In his house, 
We go to his house. We go recording. He got locks all up and down the door. The whole thing. He's got a special metal frame built in. You know, he's got this, 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 this thing that you lean up against the door that, you know, you can't kick the door in. This cat has got a safe house. And he lives in protection mode. I asked him, I said, man, how many times you been robbed? Man, man, shoot, man. Man, I, get, I, I was getting robbed almost every month, man. I'm all, people done took everything, man. So you got your doors locked so, so that you won't get robbed again. He says, yeah. So anyway, we were going to lunch or something. We're leaving. And I noticed the lady next door, right next door to him, this is the elderly lady. She has no locks on her door. None. In fact, the door is kind of cracked open. So the next day, I saw that lady in the elevator. I said, ma'am, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. You must be one of the musicians that be up there on the, up there with, with Henry. I, I hear your music. It sounds good. I said, yes, ma'am. Well, thank you. I said, oh, uh, have you ever had any? How, what kind of neighborhood is this? Oh, it's a good neighborhood. I said, you ever had any break-ins, anything? No, I've never had a break-in. Now, Henry, Henry gets broke in all the time. And I'm going to tell you why Henry gets broke in on all the time. Because he got too many gall dang locks on his door. And the criminals is looking for something that's hard to get into. They can come in and get whatever I got. I got a stereo in there made by Macintosh and a bang and Olufsen stereo system that's worth $100,000 that grandpa left me. I'm, I'm exaggerating. But she's saying that she got some, she got jewelry, she got pearls. They're out. The criminals can smell the fear. They can smell. You can look. You got too many locks. So let's break on in. It's, it's like a challenge. What I'm saying is when you're like this and you're too, you got too much protection mode, you're, you're the security guard, you're fighting all the time. When you release and when you just learn how to redirect energy, you see what I'm saying? There's martial arts where they're not even hitting you. They're just moving the energy. You just let the energy move around you, but you got to be liquid. Mm. You, you have to be in the flow state. Sometimes you got to close your eyes and you can't listen to what they're telling you. Don't let somebody tell you. You ever notice somebody, you know, they're feeding you something. They say, oh, man, you got to taste this. This is amazing, man. This is the best thing you ever ate, man. You're going to love this, Dr. B. I, have to li I don't want to listen to what you think about because I don't have your tongue. You think we all got the same tongue? In fact, look like you need to brush yours. I don't know, man. You got a tongue scraper or something? I don't have your tongue. I don't want to taste this food with your tongue. But they try to impress on you what you should feel and what you should think about something. Think about that for a second. So what happens is, is you don't have a real experience, a real, a real reference, because people have told you what it should taste like. Now, when I taste this food and I say, I don't really like it. Man, what? Man, what's wrong with you, man? You crazy. This is the bomb. I don't like it. it I don't hit me the same way it hits you. That music that you're playing, I don't like it. That's why I had to stop producing a certain music because I didn't like it. People all ask me all the time to produce some music. I, I don't I don't really work for anybody anymore. I'm doing the music I love. That the music that comes through Dr. B. You know, I work with an artist, I gotta do what they like. I gotta do what the record company likes, what the promotion man wants. I gotta try to fit in whatever, you know, whatever you know, genres there is out there. I I choose not to do that because then I can't be totally unique. And I can't be a cultural creative if I'm focusing on your telos. I got to have my own telos. I got to have my own telescope so that my telomeres and my telephones, and when I can tell myself who I am to myself, within myself, then I become we. Because I realize I'm not alone. I'm in a quantum universe, and I'm having a projection from source that I am. We are the source. We are source material, all of us together. And we get to have whatever experience we like. So that whole light matrix, right? This thing is not solid. It's changeable. Yes. Some folks are listening to this right now and changing. Yes. I mean, you definitely going to change if you listen to the God, you know, the blueprint for God power and any of these other events that we're doing right now. It's changing. So when I when I hear people talk, 
I'm listening for solutions. People say, well, you heard the brother such and such speak or sister such and such. I said, yeah, but I didn't listen long. Oh, man, but they was on some deep stuff. But I didn't hear what I needed to hear for the we of me. The we and me that we're listening for certain frequencies. I don't even know if I'm answering your questions, brother. I know I'm out here tonight. You no, know, brother, I didn't have some tea. I didn't uh, drink some hey, of this. Stuff. I didn't drink some platinum with some CBD in it, man. And yeah, you high, brother. You high. Look at all, oh, man. <laughs> you high, man. Yo, they be making fun of you, Doctor B. They say you uh, you do one of the drops, and then all of a sudden you just drink out the bottle. They be like, man, you be like, f this, man. You just drink out the bottle, man. <laughs> that, goes, that goes back to my alcoholism days. You know what I'm saying? You have one. <laughs> You have one sip. You know, we used to go to the club, right? You know, I got yeah. the first I got the first round of drinks, right? You go and you go get a drink for you and your homie, right? Y'all sipping. Mm -hmm. You say, man, I'll be right back. You go get five more drinks. And you come back and say, mm -hmm. hey, man, you ready for your second drink? <laughs> you know man. what I'm saying? So, man. you know, you go, you turn the glass all the way up. Mm. And the reason why is because a lot of times we're trying to numb ourselves. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things mm -hmm. we do, we're trying to numb it out. Indeed. You know? Let me uh we got about 20 minutes left, Dr. B. Let yes, me sir. um let me ask you this, and I'm probably gonna take one question from the one or two questions from the from the chat. Um, you know, to emulate success, they say study success. So if we see people who are successful at certain um certain things that they do, like let's say Kobe Bryant, rest in peace to that brother, amazing basketball player, Michael Jordan, or we could look at Kanye and what he did on the music scene or uh, Beyonce, what she does in the music scene. And a person will say, those people are full of themselves. Those people are arrogant and they think that it's their world and they're the center of the universe. But now in the infinite holographic fractal universe, every point is the center. So the way that these people think, and I'm not talking about morality or them being pro-black families we're not talking about that right now i'm talking about them being extremely talented at what they do in, in their career so we look at them and we criticize them and we be like oh man they arrogant they think they all that look at kobe look how he walks look how he talks look how kanye he keeps complimenting himself but now if that's the rules in a holographic fractal universe that we are the center is that how we're supposed to all think that we all are the, are the center of our universe? Is that how is that how we all should think to emulate that level of success? This is what I call meocentrism. Mm. You know, geocentrism was when they thought that the Earth was the center of the galaxy and everything went around it. Yes, actually, it's true. Mm. It depends on your perspective mm. because if you're standing on the Earth looking out, everything is going around you. But they said, no, no, no. They found out later that actually that's still a perception. Mm -hmm. There is no direction. There is only your perception. So if you feel meocentric that I am in the center, I'm going to take care of myself first. You do walk a certain way. You talk a certain way. Yeah. I was in the store the other day and, they, and, and the, the brother said, man, you look like you're going somewhere. I said, I'm always going somewhere. But no, <laughs> you, you look like you got you. You really go. I said, I am going somewhere. What do you mean? <laughs> he says, well, you know, but you don't, you know, most people, I said, most people are zombies. Mm. Most people is dead waiting on dirt. Most people waiting to get told what to do, when to do it, how to do it. Most people are afraid to wake totally up. They're afraid they, they don't have the courage to walk like this. I'm walking like this because I got something to do. Well, can we help you? No, you can't help me. I go in the store and they want to read. I ask them, I said, well, what does this product do? They get the box and they read it. Well, it says here, I thought you were supposed to be a professional. You don't know what the product does. I can read the box myself. So when I go someplace, I have a focus. I have a telos and I walk like it and I talk like it. Right? It ain't, a e it ain't like an ego trip, but uh -huh. I got to have an ego. Otherwise, I'll let you lead me out the door. Ooh. You see what I'm saying? So I got to be who I am. Mm -hmm. And I got to be, you know, what is coming through me, which is the weeness of it all that I've collected as what I call I, I am. Mm -hmm. So you can say what you want. Oh, he's got an ego. The man got $20 million that he made throwing a ball. Think about that. He threw a ball. He was out there at night throwing that ball. Early in the morning, he was throwing that ball. You were asleep. Mm. You throw that ball enough times, you'll get the basket. You play that musical beat and you play that music long enough, you'll get it. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, well, Dr. B, man, you, 
God, man, you're a musical genius. I said, man, you know how long I've been doing this? Mm. I've been making music since I was a child. I was five years old, beating on you know phone books. Back in the day, you used to have phone books and pots and pans and boxes. If I wasn't good by now, this would be terrible. It's the focus. You keep doing something over and over. You don't give up. People be giving up. You got to stay with it, and you got to do what you love, and you have to be passionate. I'm passionate with everything I'm doing. I'm not changing because you don't like me. I'm not looking for likes. Somebody said, man, Dr. B, man, you don't have enough followers on this IG. How many followers do I need? Man, you should have like two, 300 followers, man. Why? Why do I need that many followers? I only, the only thing I desire is to be able to give folks something they could use. Now, if I was to talk about, you know, certain things, I'd have probably more followers. Because a lot of people are following death, destruction, sadness, depression, repression, guilt, anger. Fear, victimhood. What about, you know, you know, but the reptilians. I said, I've met reptilians. I went and did a lecture for the reptilians. They love me. <laughs> they love you. That little gray people that got out the ship, I grabbed them by his throat. I whooped your ass. <laughs> What's wrong with your head? Big pillow head sucker. They look at me, they laugh at me. You look funny. That's right. But we become fearful. And we're full of this fear with these false expectations of feeling of, of, of being real. I'm not saying that things are not gonna happen. It's gonna be challenges. There's times when I don't talk to nobody. There's times when I, you know, when I'm going through my stuff, I'll be laid out on the floor for three, four days. The room is closed, it's dark. <laughs> I'm going through the dark night of the moon. I might go through the dark night of the moon and the, the night of the living dead two, three times a month. Mm. Guess what? The lower I go the higher I go, because it's a wave. You got to have, a, you're not just going to be all pumped up all the time. I'm Mr. Such and Such. I'm Brother El Kari. Uh, you know, I got five, six African names, and I'm such and such, and I'm the bomb. See, that's a profession, and it's okay if that works for you. I am saying that we all have to have this wave that we go through. You got to have all kinds of experiences. You got, you know, you, 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 these experiences is what makes you better at doing this thing on the planet. But guess what? When you leave here, because you're going to leave here because you're really not here. It's like, you know, this is like a television set. Your body is like a television set. I'll, I'll even tell you it's even better than this. Your body is a boat. It's a ship. Your spirit is the captain of the ship. Your soul is the thing the ship is made out of, which is everything. <laughs> Imagine the captain abandons the ship. The ship just sits there, and after a while, years and years, it just rots away because there's no captain. It has no telos. It has no direction. Just because the captain ain't in the ship, that don't mean the ship is still not a ship. Just because your television been cut off because you didn't pay the bill doesn't mean that, you know, the signal isn't coming to it. The signal is coming all the time. There is no death. Once you know this, once you realize that what you're seeing and what you're experiencing in this particular, this model, this 3D model, is not it. It's not everything. Then you start doing everything you can while you're here. How much time do you think you have? You got the time that you create. Because some folks don't have enough time. Some folks got too much time on their hands. You ever hear that? You got too much time on your hands. Can you see time on your hands? You got these big clocks on your hands and they spinning. What do you mean? Too much. He got too much time on his hands. Let me tell me. I'm down there playing music. I've been playing this one groove. You know, I'm, when I was, you know, really, really, you know, learning to play congas, I'd play one groove for eight hours. Do got that go. Go got that go. Do got that go. Go got that go. Go got that go. Go got that go. Go got that Got eight hours I'm playing. Mm. That boy lost his mind. He got too much time on his hands. Well, I'd love to have time on my hands. Then I can control it. But you're going to tell me if I listen to you and if you're an authority figure, you're going to have a judgment about what I'm doing. You know he's not all there. <laughs> what? Nobody's all there. I think he's a little crazy. You might need to be a little crazy too instead of stuck. 
you go to church and you're a Democrat and you work for the city council and you know I have five children that I'm raising. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You have this whole ego and I drive a really fine car. My car costs fifty five thousand dollars. I have a wonderful house on the hill. So you get this ego, mm -hmm. even in the conscious world. But what I'm saying is, that's okay. How can we all work together? By first having a vision. So you find the group of people of like minds, right, that have the same telos. And it might only be one of them. Right. And then you begin to, what, experience love. Love is when you are experiencing what's in the moment and allowing without the contracts. That's life organically vibrating effortlessly. That's the rhythm. That's the song. When folks take my herbal formulas, they say, Dr. B, I've never tasted anything like this before. Of course. Nobody ever made anything like this before. Do you know anybody that's mixing herbs and flower essences and essential oils and sound frequencies <clears throat> and rare earths and metals that you never even heard of? You put iridium? Why do you put iridium in your products, Dr. B? Because iridium is the time clock. And iridium helps your magnetite. Huh? You need iridium to what? Those magnetite crystals give you your direction. They give you your telos. I learned all this because I happened to get off of the matrix. I, I left everything. I didn't, I didn't have anything. They told me I was going to die. I said, well, shit. If I'm gonna die, I might as well get to living. This is when you really lie. When you when they tell you you got a certain amount of time, you go live. But what happens is, is if you you can't live if you have too much judgment about other people, and you mind other people's business. You get off of your goal. So your vision now is to throw darts and to throw shade at other people. Mm. He can't be no vegan. He weigh too much. So use a vegan, and you crazy as hell. It don't make no difference whether you, whether you no matter how you live, as long as you are living right the life you came to live, and you're not suppressing what your ancestral gifts. Those ancestral gifts are the things that you love. You you're passionate for. You will do this for free. I know right now, if all of a sudden twenty million billion dollars drops out the sky, and and brother Rich goes to the mailbox and he's got he don't even need money anymore. You think he's going to stop doing this show? Because he's doing this because he loves it. He's his ancient energy, right? Which is way past some Egyptian energy because that ain't even that long ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's only a few years ago. This thing has been traveling for billions of years. And the light and the way that energy is traveling through Brother Rich, his telos is strong. He want to come get me tomorrow. And tell me, I'll be to pick you. I got to pick you. He want to blindfold me tomorrow. Man, I don't even know where we're going. I'm coming to get you. Where do you don't even know where I'm at? I know where you're at. I'm coming to get you. You're going to be gone for the day. Where am I going? Shut up. He didn't say that. But that's what I felt. <laughs> get in the car. <clears throat> because his telos is strong, which means his telomeres are strong. See, your telomeres are like telephones, and they got the genes, right? It's like a gene, one gene calling another gene. And they all begin to talk. When your telos, your vision, is not strong and long and clear, your telomeres begin to break off because it says that you don't need to live that long here because right. your life expectancy isn't as great as it could be because you don't realize the glory that you have. You don't realize that heaven is in you. You're looking for it out there. You're waiting on your crystal to do it. You're waiting on your drink, your herbal drink to do it. You waiting on your, you know, your kale to do it for you. You waiting on your friends to give you your, you know, to anoint you and say you're great. And you to get a little plastic award. You know, all them gold and platinum records I got, right? Mm -hmm. The sister came and looked at them. She says, oh, wow, are these real? Are they real? Uh -huh. Yeah, those is real. Those real gold and platinum records. She says, wow. She said, no, I mean, are they real? I said, what do you mean? She says, uh, is it real gold and platinum? I says, what, what do you mean? She says, is that real gold? Did they give you real gold records? I stopped thinking. I start thinking for a minute. I go take one apart <laughs> and open it up. Guess what? It's plastic. It's spray painted gold. 
all these years, I've been so happy that they <laughs> gave me gold records. And I figured one day, if all things come terrible, I can take them things and take them down to the smelting plant or take them down to the to the pawn shop and trade them in. It's, it's gold. It's worth its weight in gold. No, it's worth its weight in plastic. Blew my mind. I thought they was giving me something. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, I got that one right there. That's, you know, that's a triple platinum. You know, this one over here. You know, you're all pumped up because you got a vision of what you think that is. So you've created this matrix and this ego based on what you think something is. And it's plastic. And let me tell you something, bro. Tell you another thing. I realized that all the different projects that I had, let's say there was 10, 15 gold records, mm -hmm. and about maybe you know, nine or 10 platinum records. Do you know, Brother Rich, they're all the same? And in the back, it's just shiny plastic, and it's the same. Like, you know, you see the, you know, the, the spirals inside, yeah. the grooves. Yeah. It's not. It's one record that they printed on plastic, and they wow. handed it to me. I was happy. Wow. I got Golden Reel Awards for the Engineer of the Year. I got, you know, I was doing it all. Oh, yeah. my gosh. And I was pumped up until the sister asked me if they was real. Mm. She meant, were they real gold? And you're so happy about it. And then when the checks came, same sister said, oh, yeah, I went to the mailbox. I'm all happy. I was like, whoa, I got some money. The royalty check came. She said, um, what percentage of, of, of the record did you get? I said, what do you mean? I said, you know what you mean? This is royalty. It's big cash. You know what I'm saying? There's five <laughs> zeros here. Sister says, what percentage is that? I said, well, as the producer, I received three points. She said, what percent is that? I said, well, it's not a percent. It's a point. She said, well, what's the difference between a point and a percent? I said, oh, wow. A point means it's not a percent. It's the point, whatever point they want to give you, they point and they give you something and you call it a royalty, but it's not royalty because it's nothing. It's only your ego. So sometimes you think you're from the royal family and you're a king, you're a queen, you're calling yourself an empress or an emperor, but guess what? It's actually plastic. It's something that you use as an ego to make you feel good. But at the end of the day, butt naked, what? who are you going to be? Who are you really? We got to get down to who you really are without all the trappings. Get rid of all that. Take off all your gold jewelry and everything for a minute. Who are you? Then work from there and say, now, who can I be with myself, for myself, with my own telos? What do I really desire? Do I just desire for people to give me credit and to give me royalties and to clap and say I look beautiful? I'm going to wear high heel shoes and short dresses and have a certain hairdo and all this stuff for the world? So you're worried about being ready for the world, but you may not be ready for your real self. So the real royalty, which is inside you, which is your ancestral gifts, can't shine because somebody has told you how to think, how to see. So what you're seeing is not really what is for you. You've been blindfolded. You've been blindsided. I'm saying stick with us right now because this year is amazing because the gate just opened. The gate has opened opened the things that are happening right now i mean on the on the on this month next the first of next month you know forbidden knowledge we're doing the forbidden solutions you can go go to elevationtime.com go to events and you can see a lot of the things that you know that we have coming up the events and things that we're doing and this is all of us not just us it's you too we're creating the next world there's a new world now we and you everybody is creating it once you break out of the cell in the prison, right, and can stop putting yourself in this place that's going to keep you in lockdown mode, we're in liberation time. Never mind what they're saying in the news. It's not the end. It's the beginning. And you better celebrate what you got. If you have a little, celebrate it. And it will turn into a lot. Because once you get to this new mode, you learn how to maximize the minimum. See, what a lot of people are doing is they're, 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 they're majoring in minor things. I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave this alone. How many times are y'all majoring in minor things? You all pumped up because what they said about some star or somebody or some gossip, somebody did something to somebody and you all, you know, you all up in arms about it. You weren't even there. You weren't even a witness, but you get judgmental because you're mentally retarded. The reason why people are mentally retarded because they, you know, you've allowed the world to create a mentally retarded person. So you're judging based on an idea 
but it's not actuality because you don't even know half these people that you're talking about. You most people don't even know how to mind their business. That's why I say you got to mind your business and business your mind. Mm. You got to get focused on the telos, a goal, something that you're focused on that nobody needs to know about until you get there. And when you get to that goal, you're not at the end. This year, because of where we sit in the galaxy, right, this whole thing has just opened up. Everything has changed. If you say it has changed, but you may go through a little drama. You may get colds. You may get foods. You may be faced with something that's really challenging to come up in your life because the original you, which is the soul you, which is Hanabku, which is the center, right? It is testing you to see if the particles that have come together to be you in this particular place are ready to do this. You will be tested because guess what? You are the ninja. You are the martial artist. You're the middle, the beginning, and the end. The evil one you're talking about, the enemy, is in you. It's your perception. You see? You see those movies where somebody get ready to shoot somebody and they take the gun and put the gun on their own head and say, go on and kill me. They don't get shot. <laughs> <laughs> you scared. You know what I'm saying? I remember one time, man, we was going to beat the guy up in school, right? He was the bully, right? He was huge, and he was like 23 years old, still in high school. But they kept him in high school because, you know, you know, he was the best guy on the football team. Right. So mm -hmm. we was upset because he was messing with everybody. And we was all going to get together, man. And we got together after after wrestling practice. Right. And we was going to jump him. There was nine of us. We was going to kick his ass. And we circled him. Right. And he said, what y'all finna do? He said, hold on a minute. He goes over to the bushes. He comes back with this big log about three inches thick. Big piece of wood that had fell off a tree. He lifted it up. And we stepped back because we thought he was going to hit us with it. He broke the thing across his bald head. Blood is coming down his head. And he threw the wood down and says, what y'all going to do to me? He just broke the log <laughs> against his own head. Mm. This is a badass mother. Shut your mouth. <laughs> we talking well. about my homeboy. He can't be hurt. You can't hurt him. When you get to the point where you say you can't, the world cannot hurt me. The world, I must allow myself to be hurt. Now, this is a challenging way of thinking, but this is how you tap into this quantum world. And this is where you get to the holographic matrix and change it. You change the movie. You must be the projector, the projection, and you must have an objective. Mm. If you don't have an objective, you become subjective. Mm. And sometimes your huge ass ego and all that bravado that you got is what? You just a slave inside of mm. a farm, still thinking you something. You think you the big bad sheep in the still in the farm, and you can't see that you in the farm. So you in a pharmacy that you can't see, you're blind, deaf, and dumb. I am saying. That if you'd like that, stay there. You don't got to listen to me because I'm crazy. I told you I was gone. Just because you got a dead education and, you know, you, you was taught all this stuff and you think you know all this, you know every book. That's great. Go with that. I am saying there's a group of, group of us right now that are changing this planet. Are you ready to change it? You must be willing and ready and have a clear telos, a clear focus. You must be the lens and the telescope so that your eyes don't lie to you. Okay. Facts. Excellent, my brother. Excellent. Listen, man. Listen. Excellent. Whew. Um, I got to go, uh, family, a little earlier than usual tonight. Uh, what I want y'all to do is if y'all have questions for Dr. B, he's going to give his contact information. He also is going to give his website. Y'all can contact him on the website as well. But, um, yeah, that, but uh, um, amazing talk tonight, Dr. B. Amazing talk. Um, yeah. I, Everybody's going to think about keywords you said, perception, telos. I mean, there's certain things you said tonight that's just going to stick with us. So I definitely appreciate the talk, my brother. Uh, before we get out of here, leave your contact information so the family could get at you, my brother. I know you got amazing products right here. The brother, I told you, this is my favorite one right here. The Master Mushroom Tonic. The brother got amazing workshops. Um, and yeah, just tell the people all the information so they can reach you, my brother. First of all, I would like to thank you and all those who are here making change on the planet. Indeed. Everyone, you know, yes. thank everybody for everything and forgive yourself, your family and others for what? 
imperfections. Nothing is perfect. Yes. yes. And thank you to all the teachers and you know all the brothers and sisters right now that are coming out of the woodworks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We all have to work together. We don't have time to throw shade and be enemies and talk about each other. That's not how you become a great person talking about others. Just show up and be up and rise and elevate yourself. The website is elevationtime.com elevationtime.com T-I-M-E and it's Dr. B. You see Dr. D-O-C-T-A-H B Serious on Instagram on YouTube and uh, go to the events tab on our website and you'll see the events that are coming up. The one I'm doing with Brother Billy 19 Keys, Brother Mike Rashad we're doing a great thing that's happening you know I think it's the 5th or the 6th you know there's another thing coming up in February so make sure you're on our email list at elevationtime.com Get on the email list so you can get the, the messages and the you know the, the, the newsletter that's going to tell you about these events that are not going to be public. There's some things that we're doing that are not public. And members, the members who join Elevation Time have something very special coming up. And in there, in the membership, there's a four-class uh, 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 four set. I think it's about 24 hours about aliens. Mm. But you, have, you have never thought about aliens like this before. So, you know, you go and study and do the best you can. Just do your best. Just always do your best. Watch your words. Your words matter. Mind your business. Stop jumping to conclusions. Be yourself. Be love. And true love is not judgmental and it's not contractual. True Mm -hmm. love is open and it happens automatically. You can't control it. So love yourselves as much as I love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the success that we're all having at this particular time. Open up your mailbox. There's something special in there for you. Mm -hmm. Once you have your focus and your telos. And be grateful in advance. Stop begging. Be grateful as if the thing you desire (laughs) has already already happened. Thank you, Brother Rich. This has been amazing. I'm glad you let me rant tonight uh, Mm -hmm. because stop me now because I'm on fire and we all are. Thank you very much. Thank you hey. for your, your family and everybody, you know, just thank you for everything that you do and all your support, brother. And, and I and see nothing but success. Higher and higher we rise. We rise. We are elevated. Indeed. Indeed. Special times we live in. Um, Family, I will be back here tonight. Um, I'm going to be doing a show dealing with um cryptocurrency. So um, y'all can tune in tonight, tomorrow night at about nine o'clock. I will be live again with um Chicago Crypto. And we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, the whole digital money uh, aspect of things. So tune in tonight. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, Pack house tonight. Dr. B, thank you once again. Thank we're you. Get out of here, family. See you, see you next, next time. Peace. Travel light. Yes, yes.